Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 61, take two. Um, so j- we're going to go with Jeremy for the BIPCOT NoGov license and to explain why it's take two. <laughs> Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. And as Danilo mentioned, this is the second attempt at our 61st episode. We actually had a great episode last week that the internet gods apparently did not want us to release because they we, killed all three of our recordings yeah, all we had, three we had danilo danilo was out last week with a sore throat so it actually worked out for him because he didn't miss a show but we had luis fernando mises sitting in for danilo which was a great treat and we had carlos morales returning and we had we actually had a great conversation about uh, islam religion in general uh, some psychedelic drugs and stuff like that and unfortunately somehow all three recordings, my recording, Dave's recording, and Carlos's recording, all got sabotaged along the way. And <laughs> I, w- I, I mean, I tried my hardest, but I couldn't even piece together an episode out of it because there was, no, there was no audio for me. There was pieces of audio for everybody else. It was a mess. So unfortunately, that one had to get scrapped. Hopefully, we can get Carlos and Luis back again and we can try to uh, recreate I'm, that uh... conversation. I, it, coming from my line of work, you know, you know, being a computer tech and everything, when you essentially have three systems of redundancy, that's really usually a, a, a benchmark of like, uh, wow, you're really in the right directions. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we literally had three steps of redundancy, you recording, me recording, and Carlos recording, and they all failed. I don't know what was up, man. That was just a Freaky Friday episode, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And it was a, I guess the Islam, the Islamists didn't want us that episode coming out. It's ISIS. Mm-hmm. ISIS is out there. It was it. ISIS. But it, was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was Mossad and ISIS. And then. <laughs> so that is the story. And that is why this is our second attempt at, ex- at episode 61. And as I spoke to the guys before the show, I think it's kind of fitting because it's going to work out just like the uh, Maris home run, run record because we'll have a 61 with an asterisk next to it. And we'll move on. So well, luckily uh, we have someone who can fill not only Carlos Morales' shoes, but also Luis Fernando Mises' shoes. Bill Hunsaker is here today. No pressure, Bill. <laughs> no, 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 no <laughs> pressure, no, none at all. <clears throat> yeah. So we have Bill Hunsaker coming in from New Jersey. Uh, he's a volunteer podcaster and YouTuber. Uh, his, his podcast is called Creating a New World Podcast, uh, CNW, for short. It's uh, Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and his website is to create a new world dot blogspot dot com, uh, and uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Google Plus. It's CNW Show on uh, on all three platforms. So we're going to discuss uh, his journey to volunteerism and his podcast, what, what it's about, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know topics that he discusses. So uh, so Bill, thanks a lot for coming to the show. Thank you. Okay, I always start off uh, with a little anecdote that people find interesting or amusing. Uh, I was born in December 1959 in Germany, uh, in Stuttgart, Germany. Yet the moment I was born, I was an American citizen. Uh, any any idea why? Born on a base. I'll give you a couple of hints. The date has no no re- has nothing to do with the date, and there are really two questions: Why was I born in Germany, and why was I a citizen? Even though it's born in Germany. Well, why you were born there is anybody's guess, but uh, I'm going to assume I'm going to assume you were born on an army base. Uh yes. Oh, okay. I'm going to guess bad liquor night to. <laughs> 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 uh, I haven't ascertained those details. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but basically, my dad was in the army. He was stationed there. His family was with him, and we were th- they were there when I was born. So. So uh, I went through both uh, government and uh, military dependent uh, school indoctrination camps or schools or whatever you want to call them and popped out of high school what I call a perfect uh, status drone, which meant that I uh, 
basically uh, didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't politically active. I'd, you know, I'd every election come, I'd kind of pay attention and then I'd vote. And uh, but I had this idea that I was independent because I didn't get involved with either political party. And uh, I just uh, now I think of it as and uh, Jerry Jerry Reef defined it because I that I thought of it as an illusion. But now I I believe I agree with Jerry. I think it was a delusion that it was deluding myself that I was independent, whereas I was just supporting the government without even thinking about it and accepting it as the way things should be. Uh, and this went on until 1997, and I purchased a book through the mail, which I'm going to show to you. This is called The Neotech Discovery, mm. which you may or may not have heard of. Um, uh, and uh, we can discuss it in detail later because it has more to do with uh, my show than uh, this. But I learned from that that uh, religion and government are both ways to control people. Mm. And But I didn't have any... But I read the book and then I was by myself and didn't have anything. So I just more or less, you know, I was an agnostic all my life and became an atheist after I read the book, you know, because I didn't see and the, see the point anymore. Before that, I was searching for God and never found him anyway. So at that point, I gave up the search and said, this doesn't exist. I'm just going to go on with my life. But I still consider it. I kind of withdrew some from supporting the government, but, but I still said, well, it's the way things are. I can't change it. I'll just live my life. Uh, then we had 9-11, and then we had the Iraq War. And I, I, I said, this is all crap. They're lying to us. This is all bullshit. I got to do something. So I joined the Libertarian Party. And, uh, of course, this was like 2003, 2004. And uh, so I got there, and I was interested in, you know, I, I found out about Harry Brown, uh, who was the presidential candidate in 2000 and also 96. And I bought his book. Why government doesn't work? Yeah, I learned a lot about you know that from the uh, from the libertarian perspective, and it and I agreed with almost all of it then, and I agree with a lot of it now. The basic ideas are sound. His uh, conclusions and and suggestions on what to do about it, I don't agree with anymore. But I agree with the ideas in this book. Yeah, so many. It's 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 so sad because so many guys get so far in their books, and then it's like at the very end. It's like just an utter train wreck, and you're like, no, you had it, and then you yep, blew yep. it. You had a great, you, you had a great idea. I also, of course, in 2008, uh, got the revolution, and but yeah. to me, it's like that's a great book. Oh, yeah, it's a good book, but uh, his conclusions are, you know, Constitution. We got to enforce the Constitution. Yeah, I don't, we, I don't, be I don't believe in the Constitution anymore. What did we have? We had a discussion with somebody about that, about books. Who were who we talking about about that? I can't remember now. About but but a lot of a lot of books, including liberty esque books, have a tendency of ending up with uh, these conclusions chase. that that are just kind of. It was Chase. Oh, it was Chase? Yeah, that's right. It was Chase. Oh, it was was chase. It? Oh. Yeah, because he was talking. He was. That's why he set out to re re write his book because mm -hmm. he was so, he was so tired of reading these mm -hmm. other books by people that started off great and had some great ideas, but always. In the end, it kind of was like, well, they either had no, yeah. they either had no solutions, no pot, no no possible solutions, or a government solution. And it was like, thanks for wasting my time. Mm -hmm. So he went out to he set mm -hmm. out to write his own book, which makes sense. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say that that you mentioned that I that I re that really resonates with me is th that whole thinking you're independent when you're really mm -hmm. not. Nope, uh, that was me. I I thought of myself as a rebel from a very young age. I always thought I was, you know, the uh, the outcast, the uh, the loner. Um, you know, looking back on it, if I had heard about anarchism, I would have totally been an opposer back then and claimed to be an anarchist without understanding what it really meant. Because I really thought I was independent and you know, screw authority, screw the rules. I don't need any of this mm -hmm. stuff. But I was a good little sheep for the most part in every other respect, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, I totally, totally get that because yeah, that definitely was me. And and me too. It, it took a long, it took a long time for me to get past that because I walked out. Well, I dropped out of high school, but even then, I was still, you know, at eight, <laughs> at eighteen, I, mm -hmm. thought, I at eighteen, I still thought I knew everything. And it took, oh, it, it took mm -hmm. me, well, as most of us do, but it took me another, gosh, 14, 14 years maybe to finally start waking up and going, hey, wait a minute, you're not the rebel you think you are, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so. I was 37 when I started. 
Uh, and that I had the idea in my head that a lot of people still have that, oh, all we have to do is elect the right people and this stuff will get fixed. And now I don't have that idea in my head. I have I have a certain specific idea that we'll talk about when I talk well, about the well, show. It's it's hard to have those ideas in your right. head once you realize government doesn't freaking exist. Or work, really. Well, well it doesn't exist. Things that don't exist can't yeah, work. Can't work, yeah. So uh, now I think of it as just a very bad idea that's been forced on us and well, uh, too many people have accepted. <laughs> Well, yeah, I would uh, right. I would agree with yep. that, but I would I would have to disagree yep. with Dave because going a little uh, inside baseball to your conversation with Jared the other night, Uh-oh. rights can work, <laughs> but they don't exist. So they don't, yeah. Uh, but they don't, mm-hmm. but, but they can work. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Say it, okay, because, okay, because okay. it doesn't exist means it can't work. But no, but I, I, th- I think you, I think you would when when you say government doesn't exist, which we all agree with, and Bill says it doesn't work. I think you're actually talking on two mm-hmm. separate lines there. It's it's not that you're disagreeing. It's saying you know in principle, in in theory, if the if yeah, even if, in theory it doesn't work. Yeah, you're yeah, right. That, mm-hmm. the, yeah, that, that's what I think. That's I think that's more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. It doesn't. So we're all in agreement. Check. Yay! Oh yeah. So uh, except I became, for Danilo, he's been mm-hmm. awfully quiet. Oh yeah. No, no. I'm just I'm just thinking like the uh, yeah. I mean, I say that too. Government doesn't exist, but. <clears throat> I feel like you know people can always counter with well, business doesn't exist. What what what's freedom? Freedom is just a word, you know. Rights are just words. Like right, I have, right. like what, what do you mean exist? Like tangible? You can touch? Can you touch a business? You know, can, you know, you can touch the building. You can touch the mm-hmm. you know the the uh, you know the IRS building. You can touch the ca- the 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 White House. You know. So what? So so you got you got to go further and say you know that's why I don't say I'm against government. That's why I don't say I'm against politicians or against laws. I'm against the initiation of force. I'm mm-hmm. against authority. Authority is the lie, is the illusion. Because yeah, we're, the superstition. We're, what, the, the, what the essence of government is, is saying these people have an exemption to morality that everyone else has to be subject to, mm-hmm. right? And yep. has to obey. <clears throat> that's what we're saying, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's, that's so to wrap, than, up, mm-hmm, to wrap up my yeah. journey, uh, oh. I... Uh, I became involved with the 12 vision I'm, I'm sorry the uh, libertarian party in New Jersey and actually ran for the low house of the of the state legislature in uh, 2005 and um, you know I was had no political experience at all went in there I went to one event League of women voters meet and greet the candidates and uh, actually met my my what I now consider my uh, overlords, but then just considered, you know, <laughs> I, don't know why. I, th- I thought you were gonna say my wife for some reason. Know, overlords, <laughs> by, but I don't know now why. I can, yeah. I and you're and uh, but then I overlords. just is there a difference? Them, is there a difference to me? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> In some ways, there isn't. I can sum up my platform very briefly. I I wrote it down and and just read it, and that was it. I said, uh, uh, I I will I will not vote for anything that increases the size of the state government. I will vote for anything that reduces the size of the, of the state government. And I will also not vote for anything that I have not been allowed to read and understand in advance. Unfortunately, I had a partner who uh, was going around talking about police pensions and all that kind of stuff and pissing people off, but I don't care. But in the end, I got like 700 votes and the winners got like 30,000 votes. And I said, why am I wasting my time doing this? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. So that was my one brief foray into into politics. And uh, uh what uh when it got away with a bad taste in my mouth. To be so honest. so what made you what made you go down the uh the voluntarist avenue? Well, that that I got another book in the mail. This is called Nouveautech, which is basically a continuation of Neotech. But uh, basically, this is by, and these are pseudonyms, this is by author Frank R. Wallace, and this is by, uh, mostly by author Mark Hamilton, who is Frank R. Wallace's son. A lot of people have different definitions, but the difference between, for me between uh, Neotech and, and what is now called the Neotech Society is that Neotech, basically, they, they identify what we call our masters, they call them neo-cheaters, which means they use illusions and everything to control people and force to control people. And uh, their thing was, these people are evil, we have to destroy them. Whereas uh, Mark Hamilton, his is, we have to learn to out-compete them. 
Mm. And that's that's what we're doing now. So this this basically has a lot of information, tools uh, on how to gain control of your life and basically start your own business, an honest business based on honesty and creating values and and exchanging those values with other people, which are a lot of the concepts that as I'm beginning to understand, because I'm I may I've been a really well, let's put it this way. Um, I've been I've been a voluntarist since about 2007, 2008, when I started getting involved with the New Think Society and learning about these concepts. But I didn't know it until I started listening to Stefan Molyneux's podcast and he defined these ideas for me. So I so then I understood that, yes, this is the same thing I'm talking about here. We use different terms. You know, you say non-aggression principle. I say no initiatory force or the people in neo think society i'm beginning to now say non aggression principle but that but they say no initiatory force and in fact they have they they have a program which is kind of political but it's an honest and open program that says we're going to get rid of most of the government and then and then we're going to make it so no one can use initiatory force at least as an idea and then and then we're going to convert what's left of the government into a, a business that can be that provides protection only and can be competed with and you pay for voluntarily. That's, that's um, the 12 visions party in a nutshell. I got these books and then I became involved in uh, basically we have people get together and we share the ideas and uh, they reissued the books in a little handier and an improved and in an easier to carry around form. So, and this, this SOS stands for Society of Secrets, and that's what the organization was called before it became the Neo Think Society. So, well, I mean, just so I'm un- understanding, you're, you're basically saying that the, the system that they, the, the, what, well, I guess the philosophy that the, what is it, the, these, these folks run under is, was, was, mm-hmm. essentially, was essentially voluntarism just by a different name. Pretty much, yes. Okay, pretty that, much. That's just pretty with cool. different mm-hmm. terms and names. And uh, basically, just to, it it's not fully either one, but the the philosophy is based on uh, objectivism, you know, Ayn Rand objectivism, makes sense, and also the work of an of a uh, scientist called Julian Jaynes, mm-hmm. and this is his his book called The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind, mm-hmm. and the and the con- concept here, oh, greatly oversimplified, is what. What Julian Jaynes did was he studied uh, ancient literature, and he saw a difference from early ancient literature to modern ancient literature. In early ancient literature, there was just description of events, you know, just telling this happened, this happened, this happened, and there was no introspectum, no I, no this, you know. And then later, there came a point where the literature changed, where people were saying I, me, I thought about this. This is what I think, not just reporting what happened. And he he considers that the rise of consciousness. You know, before we had uh, nature created brains that that were bigger and had more capacity than the animals around us. But we had to somebody had a breakthrough and learned how to use them to think and, you know, in all the things that we consider consciousness today. But the problem was, even though somebody said, yes, that's great. Um, and talk to other people about it. Other people said, I still want to control people, so I'm not. I'm going to try to force them not to think, you know, and keep them in that more animal-like mentality, and that's how you control people. And that's what they do nowadays with indoctrination in, in uh, state schools and uh, with uh, church schools where they indoctrinate you into religion and all those sort of things. So that's the idea. Uh, so three things. Three things, basically. Number one, I'm in addition to everything else we talked about, I'm a skeptic. For me personally, I don't believe anything. I know well, that, that, that's an agnostic. Yeah, but no, no, let me finish. Yeah. I know and understand things to a greater or lesser degree of certainty. So therefore, because I don't believe, new information can alter my understanding of something, and I'm not stuck and tied to, to what I what I see now. If I see new information that I find credible, then I, then I can incorporate that into what I'm what I'm thinking and and continue to grow and learn. 
you know, the, the problem is people get emotionally tied to their ideas and then they, you know, they can't accept new information if it contradicts their ideas. If you understand what I'm saying. Well, sure. That's the problem with just about every statist that many of the newly minted anarchists that I come across, mm -hmm. some of the longer term anarchists, pretty much everybody. They all <laughs> <laughs> and I, everyone I also goes wanna, to yeah, bounce, I have. Man. We all have. Yeah, everybody has. I mean. We, we've, we've talked about this a, a bunch, and uh, I was actually talking about it with a couple of friends of mine the other day. There's just the residual, you know, we use the phrase the residual effects of statism. Mm -hmm. And it, it lingers with all of us to a certain extent. I mean, we, oh, yeah, I, me I, too. I, I, yeah, me I, too. I, I, you know, there's certain things that we all, I mean, I'm not, I, I won't speak for everybody, but I know, I can, I can speak for the other two here. I know all three of us have done it to, in conversations with our, with, between ourselves, where you mm -hmm. slip into these things and you don't, you don't even mean to. It's just, yeah, you start saying we instead of the government. And, well, well, not yeah, but not even, or, but not yeah, even things that. like that. No, but I'm just talking about but like being like wedded to certain ideas and like being mm -hmm. that emotional attachment. It still happens, and that's what it is. It's that residual effect because you're so used to having the, you're so used to essentially being programmed mm -hmm. that you know, one, getting away from that, it's 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 hard. It's a it's a hard habit well, to break because you don't. Everyone these days is taught how to be programmed and not how to program themselves. Mm -hmm. well, sure. And that's a that's a big problem with society is most of the people just accept everything that comes out of everyone's mouth, and it's just uh, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, when you when you when you share something or you say something or it might be a conspiracy or something leaning on the edge of a conspiracy. They always are like, oh, you know, it's like, look, this is just information I'm putting out or this is just, you know, I'm just sharing this. You know, I'm not saying I believe 100 percent that this is fact. Like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, exactly. One way I like, I like to describe uh, volunteerism is uh, it's a descript descriptive way of, of, uh, of describing reality rather than a prescriptive way. Right. So I, I'm not trying to tell people how to live their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find like how to be a virtuous person, you know, how to, how to, uh, you know, I guess attain happiness, you know, how to reach nirvana <laughs> with volunteerism, right? It's a very basic framework of living in a civilized society, right? There is no initiation of force that is tolerated mm -hmm. by any individual or group of individuals or any institution. And that's it. Mm -hmm. right? There's no exemptions. That's it. Um, very basic. And uh, you can live your life as a, as a complete douchebag, and follow those principles. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's entirely possible. <laughs> Along the same lines, I also don't believe in anything. I value things based on, on their benefit to me, but I don't believe in it. And I know that's a, a very fine distinction, but to me, it makes all the difference between blindly following someone and living your own life. That's the first part. Now, the second part, it's an analogy, and I want to also stress that these are all my ideas. They don't come directly from NeoThink or anywhere else. It's just the amalgamation of everything I've listened to and heard and everything. Okay, here's an analogy. There are three kinds of people. There are followers who are looking for a leader to tell them what to think or do. There are leaders who, who want to f tell people what to think, you know, believe or think and do. And then there are self-leaders who have no desire to tell people what to believe or think and do and don't want to be told what to believe or think and, and do. So there's three kinds of people. Followers are looking for a leader they want to lead or leaders. Leaders want more followers. And, of course, self-leaders want more self-leaders. Other people that aren't going to try to tell, aren't going to ask them to tell them what to think or, you know, believe or think and do and and not what to uh, not not try to tell them what to believe or think and do. The problem yeah. is right now the leaders are in charge of the world, mostly subconsciously, mm -hmm. but in some ways consciously, they're finding ways to get more and more followers, and that includes creating schools that create followers. I think now, they're the, creating well, more slaves. I don't necessarily think followers. Well. well I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, p pick at that explanation a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, say say a, a difference between ruler and a leader. I think that's an important mm -hmm. distinction. Whereas a leader, you know, focuses on uh, governing people by force, right? Uh, a ruler, <laughs> a leader attracts mm -hmm. followers by his demeanor, 
right, by the way he talks and his thoughts and concepts that he has espouses, mm-hmm. right? No mm-hmm. initiation of force is necessary. Uh, and I think it's very important to to distinguish the, those two. Yeah, you, you, know? can, I, you can freely substitute ruler for leader, and I, I agree, having heard your explanation, that that's better, that describes what I'm trying to say better. So, so follow a so ruler, have, self-ruler, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I like self ruler too. So uh, our follower, know, governor, self governor. I think that yes, one makes so, the best. Mm-hmm. So we have le- you know rulers who want more followers or slaves, and so they they constantly do things, whether consciously or subconsciously, to create more followers and slaves, including coercion, including indoctrination, including all of these things. And that's how we have the world we live in now. And everyone's born with kind of a tendency to be one of the three, either a, a follower, a ruler, or a self-ruler or self-leader. And and some people have a stronger tendency to, than others, and it's those people that have a strong tendency to be either rulers or self-leaders that break out of the indoctrination, and all of us have kind of broken out of the indoctrination and become self-rulers, and uh but unfortunately, there are other people who break out of the indoctrination and become rulers. Well, that's part of the problem. But that's that's just an idea, like I said. Well, and no, that's sure. the way it looks to me. It looks to me. That's the way the world looks to me. So the the only thing I, I would say is I think I I don't necessarily agree that people are are predisposed in any way to fall in any of those three categories. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm sure. Maybe the the less the, the people that are born less intelligent, because that that's something that seems to be able to be that you know that that I, IQ does have some that does does have some kind of importance, and mm-hmm. it does seem to be it's it's very hard to rule smart people. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. no, yeah, but I'm saying like I can I, I can I can see that maybe people that are born with a, a, a less of a capacity, I guess, to learn somehow, um, maybe they might be in more of a following category but i i mean I, i'm somebody who firmly believes that pretty much everybody is born an anarchist and that the, oh, yeah. the, the 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 following nature the the looking for a ruler that's beaten into everybody so mm-hmm. i that that that's the only pushback i would give to that to what what you mm-hmm. said is that i think it, i mean sure is it possible that certain people might be predisposed yeah it, it could be absolutely i'm not i'm not going to discount it and say it it, it doesn't it doesn't occur at all I, I would say this might be a a, uh, a product of culture, of yeah, the well, current culture. Well, no, that's mm-hmm. what that's what I'm saying. I, I think it's more I think it's more uh, it's more nurture than nature well, when it you comes know, to, when it comes to how people start forming their ideas and and what mm-hmm. what camp they end up falling into. I think it has more. I per, you know this is my opinion. I, I think it has more to do with with nurture than it does nature. I I agree, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, we're all born, because you have this mystical religious idea that everyone has their personality downloaded with them from heaven or whatever, you know, the idea of a soul, which I disagree with 100%. I think the mind is produced by the brain, period. There's nothing, there's nothing supernatural, there's nothing mystical, the mind is produced by the brain, period. You know, and if you have proof. No, but that's my okay, experience. Okay, then you're on a belief. No, I'm not. You this is proof, this is my proof. understanding of the world at this point in time, but it's not set in stone. Do you have evidence of what I'm saying doesn't appear to exist? Exists? Man, consciousness. I'm willing to listen to it. Me, I, I, I get. Oh, but I think consciousness. I think. Yeah, this could be a rabbit <laughs> hole. I'll sit, you know, but what I'm saying is it, it's an analogy. It's an oversimplification. People are really born with many, many potential personality, you know, personality aspects. And, you know, so this is an oversimplification, oversimplification, but it, it describes the world, you know, around us and that why we're where we are. You know, we're, we're the most intelligent animal on the planet, but consciousness is learned. It's not something that's inherent to the structure of our brains. I think we learn how to be conscious from our parents and other people we encounter as we as we grow. But I don't know that for certain, and I'm not claiming to know it for certain. But that's that's the way it appears to me. And unfortunately, the way what we're initially taught uh, as we start to develop and uh, and begin to form, you know, a personality and a consciousness is uh, is authority. Do this, or I'm going to beat you. 
I've never been a parent. I've never had children. But if I ever do, 100% going to be a peaceful parent. I'm not going to not going to spank or or hit or or belittle or or yell when the child's too young and understand. I'm going to protect it. And when it begins to show the ability to understand, then I'm going to explain and not force things on them and say, just because I'm your parent, you have to do what I say. I'm going to explain why it's in their best interest to do this particular thing. And then let them decide, obviously. You know, you got to make the person an autonomous, you know, you got to, that's how you, that's yep. how you teach them to be a self leader rather than a follower in my analogy. Peaceful parenting, oh yeah, is one of the most difficult jobs, but one of the most vital jobs for. Well, absolutely for the future. Yeah, for creating a more peaceful, uh, you know, gentle, compassionate generation of people. Um, you know, you can we can talk to status as much as you want, you know, but it's it's uh, it's a it's really an uphill battle. You know, talking to people with already decades of uh, of programming that we have to unwind mm -hmm. and uh, dis disassemble. Um, but when you raise children the correct way, you know, you're already breaking the cycle of violence, right? And, uh, and, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a much quicker route. Um, and so I commend any, uh, any peaceful parenters or homeschoolers or unschoolers, mm -hmm. uh, for doing that. So, which, which is why I love to interview them. <laughs> if we, if you don't have any other comments or questions about that, we'll move on to the show and then we can move on to whatever, whatever you want to do. Okay. My show is called the, uh, creating a new world and it's about a, a voluntarist world but with within the neothink society it's called the 12 visions world because mark hamilton wrote a book called visions basically he wrote it in the form of i i imagined what a what this world would look like and then described it in 12 perspective and called them visions i personally wish he'd use a different format than visions because it sounds kind of mystical and all that kind of stuff <laughs> a little hokey, but, but yeah. you know <laughs> yeah so i'm going to quickly read the 12 visions so we can get so you get an idea what it's what it's talking about okay uh it's basically vision one become the person you were meant to be died before and in schools and everything tried to beat you into being something else um vision two live the life you were meant to live Vision three, feel extraordinary. Vision four, stop aging. Vision five, get the job of your dreams. Vision six, start the company you always wanted. Vision seven, embrace the lover of your fantasies. Vision eight, diet down to the body you always envied. Vision nine, become a genius. Vision 10, surround yourself with geniuses. Vision 11, ride a prosperity wave that will make you a millionaire or at least live like a millionaire. And vision 12, enjoy perfect and phys perfect physical and mental health. So those are the, the 12 visions that describe the world. And that I, in the show, I talk about what the world will look like. And each, each, week, each week, I pick a different topic and talk about, you know, what that will look like in the, in the voluntarist or 12 visions world. And I'm starting to use those terms in the show rather than just the neo-think society terms. What it will look like in that kind of world as opposed to what it looks like in the world now. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of the show, I talk about 12, what I call, but hasn't been really called by anybody else, the 12 Visions Movement, which is, you know, the idea of moving toward that kind of world. And then and then talk about the 12 Visions Party, which is basic a political party, but a political party that wants to transform, first reduce the government to uh, a protection-only government and then uh, outlaw initiatory force and then transform what's left of the government into a business that can be competed with and that you pay for their services voluntarily. <clears throat> That's the concept. But I am, and I taught you, if you listen to the later shows, you'll hear me talking about the fact that all of this is meaningless unless enough people understand and agree with these ideas. You're not going to get a political, uh, a nonviolent resolution from a political action, in my opinion. So, but and, if you have a, if you have, yeah, a, yeah, unless the entire population. It, but, right. but then the same thing could be said for a communist revolution or any other kind of revolution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. the uh, the idea, just to put bare bones on it, of the Twelve Visions Party, is that. You have a, a presidential candidate that talks about these all, all of these ideas and basically tells people 
that that's what they're going to do. They're going to change the government into a business that, that you pay for voluntarily and can be competed with. And then if enough people understand and accept that idea, then they'll elect that person. But this uh, has to be a very special person, unfortunately. Wow. And that's where, where I begin to have some, some problems. And honestly, it's that how are we going to find a person that isn't going to be corrupted or, or, well, or, or persuaded killed. or killed? And that's a very important aspect. You're going to have to have very it, yeah. a lot of naivety is in that. Just with the libertarian approach, the top down mm -hmm. takedown. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of naivety in that. A lot of people don't realize how much of the federal government and state governments aren't elected officials. Mm -hmm. These are people in there that can't be fired. Essentially, you essentially has to have to go in there and shut down operations of the entire structure. Right. Well, and that's why I think you that you can't it's a, go in and go yeah. change a few words on a sheet of paper and unless, expect that 80% right, right. to change. I agree. And that's why unless enough people can understand these ideas that would be able to directly support it, well, it won't work. Yeah. And that's my that's my assessment too. It won't work. But I see it as a more organized approach than uh, and I agree with it it's also a valid approach to just persuade people with these ideas of voluntarism and anarcho-capitalism, which I agree with a hundred percent. And then, and then suggest to people that the best idea is just stop supporting the government and walk and, you know, and walk away. I, I agree a hundred percent with the meat, the cartoon meme of the plank projecting over the edge of a cliff with a political person at a podium standing on the end over the cliff and a bunch of people standing on the other end. Yep. I agree with that 100%. If all those people walk off that plank, that well, guy's going to go down. You yeah. know? Well, I, I, In other words, stop supporting them. Well, sure. I, I, I think, though, that mm -hmm. that's why, I mean, just the idea but, that you mm -hmm. have to find a special person sh mm -hmm. should, in my, in my opinion, rule that out immediately because that's the great man fallacy right there so, yeah, it sounds you very can, Madis you can, madisonian <laughs> you, can, you can you can you can wrap it up in whatever other flowery language you want and you can add all these ideas that sound like voluntarism to it but if they involve looking for this not even necessarily perfect but this good enough person to do this then you're looking for a great man and you've got the great man fallacy and the idea should probably be scrapped wholesale and uh, we should, you should you should but, look for another yeah. avenue. Yeah, but it's that, not going to be just the one person though, because but, just but, like any other any other presidential candidate or whatever, there's a great body of people supporting that person. But, yeah, but it's still but it's still no, but it's still but you, but you said it yourself. You it's have a it, it, has, it has to be a very it has to be a very special person. That's the great mm -hmm. man right there. That's the that's the reason we did that two hour and forty five minute episode about bashing the polls with Lufine. And about how mm -hmm. number one, and then we did the follow up about incrementalism. Mm -hmm. Both of these are tied to this. Incrementalism does not work. It never has because the government has never, no government has ever been downsized. They mm -hmm. always continue to increase because increment because all incrementalism does, and this I'll, I'll get on my soapbox here a little bit because certainly this, this starts that this, and it's not directed at you. This is idea. Just oh no, it's me. the idea. It's because the idea. People, it's always the idea, even. But people get in the way of that. Go well, ahead. Yeah, people, the they they attack. Somebody like me gets attacked for saying that incrementalism won't work, and say, "Well, you're 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 the dreamer. You're the utopian. You're not taking the pragmatic approach." And I've said this before, mm -hmm. and I'll say it again. That's absolute fucking bullshit. Because what the fuck is pragmatic about using the system to try and shrink it if your ultimate goal is to gain more people who understand the same thing as you do and would prefer to have no government. Because those people currently believe that a government is necessary. By using the incremental approach, even if it's with this blaring sign over your head saying, hey, this is our long-term goal, this is what we want to do down the road, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. you do by, by using the incremental approaches is lend is lend more legitimacy to the system because when things do go right those people you're trying to convince go hey look the system worked though why do we need to change it so it's not pragmatic to be I, i'm so tired of people who think the incremental approach is pragmatic it's fucking bullshit it's not pragmatic mm -hmm. it is probably one of the least pragmatic things you could do it's 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 essentially what fdr did to the fucking depression it's fucking extending it for no goddamn reason other than the fact that you're a fucking potato. 
All right, it can so, be done so, a lot quicker. <laughs> so, so Jeremy, let, let me ask you, which presidential nomination nominee are you supporting for the 26th? I am not. <laughs> I am not. I, I'm sorry, Adam. I love you, brother, but I am not fucking goddamn endorsing anybody, including John motherfucking McAfee. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Me neither. What the fuck is wrong with anarchists? Holy uh, God damn. Why did you have oh, to say yeah. that? Now I'm even more pissed off. What the fuck <laughs> is wrong with that guy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. He goes off the limit of a goddamn earth ship. He becomes, a fucking, off the trip. he becomes more of a fucking hippie, and now he's fucking endorsing people? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> right. I have no words. <laughs> it's and another I, one of I'm your boys, that. man, Dave. What the yeah. fuck is all these people you bring to me, man? Adam Gokash, fucking Dave Champion. They're all fucking crazy. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I can't speak on behalf of uh, uh, either I one do, of them. I, I'm kidding. I do love Adam. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I like Adam, too. And Adam called me the other day and I just told him I, I can't be involved with anything political, man. I, I refuse to do it. And he Wait, said he understood. So was he looking for your support or looking for? Well, or looking for you to endorse him as well. Like, what was he? No, was it was about? just no. it was just he wanted me to help him do some coordinating in Alabama and uh, stuff like that for events. And I just I told him I'd be happy to help him for anything that wasn't political. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to me, the idea, the I, I never heard of the great man fallacy. Is that, a, is that a, you just make that up, Jeremy? Because I, li I like it. <laughs> I never heard. And of I, that. I, 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 I hear it too, and it's, it's, but, it's, yeah, it's but, the same thing. But I, I just wanted to say that what I'm talking about is not incrementalism, not at least from the, uh, the is. viewpoint, of, but not from the viewpoint of of uh, misnamed uh, minarchist. Uh, libertarians who say we want to get an office and we want to slowly reduce the government. This is this is basically reducing and eliminating the government within within the two terms of a one president, not That's not over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but within eight years. Uh, it's, uh, still, it's still incremental. Still is not going to work. Look, look, you have too many military officials and stuff at top that are that that have like you know, multi-million dollar pensions and, uh, and deals you know, and, and all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. all these people, they, they, they depend on surviving off of the system of theft and robbery. And if a good guy gets in at the top or what we would think is a good guy, uh, and they try to do anything, uh, even if the, the majority of the population wants this to happen, uh, the money is behind this government and you're never, uh, uh behind any government and, 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 and you're never going to beat them using their game. You just you, you can't beat the devil playing his game. You yeah. just can't. It's it's. Uh, I remember reading when I was in high school. I read Plato's Republic, and he talked about uh, you know his utopia and uh, and he says the best king would be a philosopher king, mm -hmm. right? Because the philosopher king, like um, kind of like a, the conductor of an orchestra, you know, understands all of the uh, the instruments, right? Uh, a philosopher understands like you know most or every profession and and therefore he would be the best leader um, but uh, but I think uh, I think Larkin Rose's video the um, if you were king video uh, really uh, successfully uh, debunks that idea in the sense that um, if a system just like Dave says is is founded on theft and coercion right and threat and threats of threats of violence um, that it doesn't matter who is at the helm. It doesn't matter who sits on the throne, right? Because the system, that's what it's based on. And, and there's a lot of people, just like you said, there's a lot of parasites sucking on that, sucking on that system, <laughs> deriving their nourishment from it. And they're not going to be happy if you try to kick them off. So, um, and, I, and I assume if somebody does go up there and sincerely tries to do that, I would fear for their lives. So I, uh, I strongly encourage anyone uh, for that reason, not to seek <laughs> solutions in politics. <laughs> so yeah. I would be a martyr. I just I, I I I I hear where you're coming from for a lot of this stuff and it does sound really cool, uh, Bill, but uh, you know, as far as political, man, in my uh in my honest opinion, anyone uh that thinks that anything can be solved politic by politics, uh they just aren't looking at it right because they're forgetting one huge key essential big thing here government doesn't exist so what they're talking about then is then controlling this non-existent thing to then disseminate in the people who believe in this non-existent things mind that the thing that that is controlling them that is controlled by the good guys is does it doesn't exist because if if you're a libertarian and you believe that nothing should be or, or you understand that the non-aggression principle you understand that government cannot be legitimate 
in any way, form, shape, form, or fashion. Plain and simple. So th- you have this delusion in your head if you think that government exists or can be used or is a thing that is a anything other than a mass delusion, in my opinion. So, so let me just ask one more thing. Go, going along with what Dave just said, just said that government doesn't exist, um, I, I like to use the idea that you know people say if there was a switch that you could um, you could flip and then you know all the politicians would disappear, all the you know the, the police, the military, all the uh, you know the agencies of government would just disappear. Would you flip it, right? And um, I don't think it would make a difference, right? Because the reason that those uh, buildings and those institutions and those laws and politicians are there. What is the reason that they're there, right? They're there because the people have created them. They have asked for it, right? They believe in it, right? They wanted it to be there. So in the same way that if you murder, like you're in like in 15th century Europe, and say you murder all of the all of the clergymen and the, and the bishops and the cardinals and the pope, that doesn't mean that you're going to produce a society of philosophical atheists. Because they don't understand the idea, the concepts of atheism. No, they're, they're just going to put they're, it they're in gonna just, They're going to just reproduce it again, right? So that's why the focus should always be on educating people. Uh, you know, just what, what Dave said: uh, government doesn't exist, or the, what statism is, which is the belief in authority. But you did say something very awesome earlier, Bill. And I will say this: the idea of outcompeting the state. I, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah, I awesome. fully, yeah. I mm-hmm. fully, right. the, the, the more I look at things, the more I really, really examine things, the more I, I just look at the way society is going. Technology is making government obsolete. Think about going and getting your, your, your tags for your, 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 your car or your driver's mm-hmm. license versus creating a Facebook account, getting on there and contacting someone in Iran. Or, mm-hmm. or, or North Korea or, or Russia or whatever else will get us tagged to maybe some NSA uh, agents will start listening to this show. Mm-hmm. So, um, but you get the drift. It's so much more difficult. It's a drag and people are just, get, they're so used to everything. Like if your phone lags for a half a day, you're like, I'm going to throw this piece of trash away. I don't understand why they don't transfer that to government. If I can't get my license just sent to the mail, in five seconds, why should I even have to deal with this? That pretty soon, that's that's how the kids these days are going to do it. And government's not going to be able to compete. And it's either going to fail or we're going to see mass tyranny across the world. It, but the way technology is going, I just don't see how mass tyranny can blindly fleece have, that many we, people. We, we already have. Yeah, mass, and we, we already have mass tyranny, Dave. We do, but <laughs> yes, we do. But the people aren't awake to it yet. The people, the the mass majority isn't awake to it yet. But that, but that doesn't, but that, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> For sure, I'm not. And that's that's, that's part of that's part of the the problem. And I really see the problem. And I I hear all, what all of you are saying, but part of the problem is in order for us to outcompete what is really the structure there that has been created by individuals who are taking the easy way out and and basically stealing value from everyone instead of creating value themselves, which is a great part of the Neothink Society philosophy, is the idea of creating value and exchanging it for other value rather than stealing, you know, stealing what other people have created and produced, which is what government does. Part of it is, you know, I'm seeing what it is and I'm getting closer to accepting it, that what we really have is these mega corporations who are using the idea of government as a front. Well, you government know. is also a corporation. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, but they're uh, they're I... using the idea of government as a benevolent, you know, thing that helps people. You know, the bullshit that we're taught in school as as a front for their for their activities of stealing. You know what we what we create and produce. And, and, you know, they've set up this horrible system that we all know about where they're not only stealing our, our creative creation and production, they're stealing the future creation and production of our children and their children and their children on and on and on. And, but the problem is all of this, we're, and I'm really going to start talking about this on my show, is that all of this talk about 
getting somebody into the federal government and having him change anything means nothing if we have nothing to compete with these huge corporations. And that's part of what we have to do is to have have competing companies that provide the same services or the same perceived services. And when I before I was talking about is the most you should have is is protection, you know, and that and. I'm I'm seeing if we can get a, get into a voluntary society, we'll have a future where protection becomes technological rather than the idea of these people are going to protect. Them. <laughs> the more I listen to your show, to this show, and the more I listen to, I've started to listen to uh, Freedom Fiends, uh, which I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go back and listen to the whole catalog of that show because that's <laughs> been on for years and years and years. But I picked it up from the last week yeah, or two, there's only, there's only and nine. now I'm trying to listen daily, <laughs> unless unless you're talking unless they're talking about a topic that I'm not particularly interested in. Like I said, everyone's free to listen to or topics? not listen to whatever. <laughs> we talk about whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah, you bring up you bring up news stories. You bring up you know things and you talk about we're, we're, it's right, free form but it's still you bring stuff in and you talk about we're, it. we're the comic the freedom fiends are the comic relief that's the that's the yeah that's it's the fun <laughs> but sometimes you get on the topics that i'm not particularly interested well, the, in the, so the, i just move on all right, you know well, the, the, the one thing i want to yeah. say though is um you know to kind of touch on what, what dave was saying before about the you know the the ideas that you're that you're bringing forth that you know this um, philosophy that you've been that you've been you know following or looking into for a while, um, mm-hmm. a lot a lot a lot of it does seem to line up, line up with voluntarism, of course, and the you know the end goal of the com- having something stuff to compete with government, like Dave said, is great, and that and I think Danilo I think Danilo agrees too. We, I think we all agree with that. Mm-hmm. I would just say that as a whole, that organization, that philosophy, who's ever adopted it, whatever. Um, you may want to seriously consider just dropping the political angle altogether, because if you're going to, mm-hmm. especially you, I mean, for you yourself, if you're going to sit there and say, well, you now see that, you know, without more people, it's not going to work. Well, yeah, Absolutely. that's the same, but that's the same thing with everything, with everything else. And that's why I keep this. Is, I got into this argument with a, with a bunch of, um, big L libertarians the other day, mm-hmm. who of course called me, a, a, a who called my, my ideas pipe dreams and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't mm-hmm. being pragmatic. And I, I tried to explain this to them. And of course it just went over their head, but here's the point in order to get that type of support to do things politically, <clears throat> you need a rather large number. It doesn't necessarily have to be more than 50% of the population because we all know right, not right. that many vote. But you need, right. you know, essentially you need 51% of the voting population. However, you can get the same, you can have the same effect by maybe 10% of the population just not complying anymore. Why would anybody want to focus their time, energy, and money on the option that's going to take 50 plus percent? When you can, when there's an option in front of you that requires mm-hmm. technically less effort, and you only need ten percent, this is what I don't understand about libertarians, mm-hmm. anarchists, mm-hmm. anarchists, mm-hmm. anybody who thinks that they can they that they can destroy the government and shrink it from within. You don't have to. You just say mm-hmm. no. You get ten percent of the population in any in any area saying no. Those laws, whatever you're saying no to, go away. That's it. They're done. They can't enforce them when that many people just say no. Why would, why would you know, like I said, everything else sounds great, but anything involved in the political realm to me mm-hmm. just seems like such a waste of time and you're actually doubling your efforts. And one of my biggest pet peeves that I've had my entire life is doing things twice when it could have been done right the first fucking time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why the hell would we wait? Would anybody want to waste their time with? Like that's what I don't get. I don't. I'm like, yes, sure, okay. We, you know, every little bit helps. Fuck that shit. Go out, go out and be free. Yeah, I don't agree go, with that. Go, go be out. Be, be go be free right fucking now. Go mm-hmm. do things mm-hmm. and just start being that leader that we were talking about earlier. That Danilo made that distinction between ruler and leader, and the leader, the the person that people. Now, they don't maybe necessarily w- want people to follow them, but other people choose to either follow them or at least mimic some of their behavior because they see what this person is doing and it 
it resonates with them. It's positive for them. Mm -hmm. they, they get something from it. They want to do that too. That's what leading by example is all about. And if we just had a few more people out there who don't just freaking, you know, don't don't, don't bitch about this stuff, but like, you know, I, I, I mean, fuck it. I was going to say not to toot my own horn, but fuck it. I'm one of these people that's out there doing mm -hmm. this shit. I'm one, of the people that, I'm one of the people that's out there fucking not, not complying to whatever the fuck I possibly can and saying, please mm -hmm. join me. Let's have some fucking fun out here. Mm -hmm. Let's not just if, fucking try to, to try to get buried and say, oh, we, it's so horrible that we can't do anything or we, there, we have to do it this way. Fuck that. Let's do it our <laughs> way, man. Let's fucking go out and have some fucking fun and just fucking and just say, fuck the government. Everybody with me now. <laughs> fuck the government. <laughs> <laughs> that ties in with the, it. that Absolutely. ties in just quickly that ties in with the new children's story that I will be mm -hmm. that I am working on. It's going to be called <laughs> Fuck the State. It's actually going to be a companion to go the fuck to sleep. Mm -hmm. But we'll, more on that later. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh I just want to <laughs> nice. say if if you're not going to toot your horn, who is going to? Who's yeah, going to? Exactly. Who's going to toot mean... your horn if you're not going to toot it yourself? Uh, but to complete the thought before you went to that excellent rant and, and diversion as I'm listening to this show and to the downfall and to freedom fiends and listening to other podcasts such as dangerous history as I continue to listen to these I am moving further and further away from these ideas and I'm and my show is going to grow and develop in the same way and it's going to end up being only talking about the benefits of voluntarism and not this one possible, but as I'm seeing it now, more and more unlikely way to get to the, to, to the voluntarist society. And that's, you know, because I'm, a, I'm going to tomorrow night that when I get to the section where I talk about the 12 visions party, I'm going to go in through in detail what is required even to get this thing off the ground. And then I'm going to say, I'm beginning to think that this, you know, this isn't going to work, not where we are now. I mean, if, if somebody tried to do this in the fifties, they might've had a chance, maybe, maybe, or maybe not even then because we already had the, military industrial complex in place. I think the government was more in control of society back then <coughs> than it is now. You got to so understand with control, the tighter you people. squeeze, the less you actually control. Oh, yeah. And they, you know, and fewer people were, fewer people were actually, you know, were actually uh, where we are as far as, you know, not accepting these ideas that somebody has to be in charge, et cetera, et cetera. And, the few people who were were being isolated and ostracized and and pushed to the side then it's less so now mm -hmm. there's more people who are who are who are where we are and there's more people that are you know and and those and now we have much you know we have avenues of communication such as this show and my show and the other podcasts that I talked about they have less control over that they because they even then in the 50s they had control over television radio newspapers you just try to write a op-ed piece in the 50s and just submit it to some major national newspaper they laugh in your face then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now newspapers have become almost irrelevant not quite it's they're still somewhat relevant in some places but they're not universally relevant the way they were in the you know much earlier. I think it depends on the yeah. age. I think yeah, if you're yeah. under 30, they're Absolutely. irrelevant. If you're over 30, they're sliding into irreverency. Or if you're a weird person like me who's 56 and still thinks they're re irrelevant, I think all <laughs> all all, uh, all quote unquote traditional media is irrelevant because it's controlled. It's you know because basically you know mm. they're 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 there to to more to make a profit to share than sharing the truth. To me, the uh, the phrase, uh, you know, money is the root of all evil, that's not it. Love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money more than you love your fellow human beings, that's evil. That's evil to me. Well, maybe. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, to me, money is a tool to, to live and, and survive and enjoy your life. Well, do you have any tools I can borrow people, to live and survive and enjoy my life? I'm having problems. Hey, Bill, Bill, can I read your tools? Certainly. Phil? 
Can I, uh, can <laughs> I read your tool shed? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any tools in my tool shed. They just come in and they go out. Yeah, I have that, I have that <laughs> problem too. It's but, funny how that works. But they're I, gone by the time I earn them because I've, I, before I started you know, taking real responsibility for my life, I made a lot of financial mistakes, and now I'm paying. The only thing I can I can I can tell you is just take as much as you can, and buy Bitcoin. And and by that I mean as much as you're comfortable with. So like if even if it's twenty dollars a month, trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, yeah we may we may have to have a private conversation. I may have yeah. to get get the Bitcoin education from any of you who would feel well, you know want to share it to me because I don't even know where to start. Well, Dave can definitely help you with that. Yep. But yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and I just want to wrap up with uh, a, a little bit of uh, continuation of what Jeremy was saying, um, which is when people, when I, you know, you know, when, I don't like to tell people I'm an anarchist, not really because, and the, the word anarchist has such a bad connotation, but mm -hmm. because people all of a sudden their brains start going, you know, the, the normal status questions, you know, what about the roads? What, how do we feed the poor? Mm -hmm. How do we take care of the far, parks and forests? And how do we child labor and all this crap, you know? And so then you got to go down these stupid rabbit holes of, you know, concocting various hypothetical situations and how I would do it in my particular voluntary society. And it's just so stupid. It doesn't make sense to me. And so the, and, and so the idea is that, you know, I'm not, I'm not an anarchist because I like, or, or volunteers because I expect to see a voluntary society in my life. Right. I'm a voluntarist because it's a moral and it's a just position. Right. And I can live my life without um, what well, with the understanding that I am not supporting harming my neighbor right or I'm not supporting theft of my neighbor or or murder or occupation of people that you know practice a different religion or look differently than me right through through the state right so that's the way and when people ask me how can I improve the world the first thing I say is work on yourself right mm -hmm. improve yourself become a Become a respectable, kind, gentle, compassionate, loving human being, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's how you want to really want to improve the world. That's how you do it. Or as Jeffrey Tucker says, find something that you're good at and do it to the best of your ability. That's how you improve the world. Very simple, right? Or, or and even more, a little bit, we want to go a little bit further, have kids and raise them in a similar way, right? That's how you improve the world. You don't improve the world by appealing and legitimizing a, uh, a an institution that's based in, in theft and coercion, right? That's subvert goodness in the world that's how you destroy productivity in the world all right yeah. so start basic okay <laughs> don't, don't don't deal with things that you don't understand all right <laughs> yeah well uh i i would agree and uh mm -hmm. i here, agree too here here um well yeah so this was uh this was a great this was an interesting conversation bill i'm glad mm -hmm. uh, we finally got to have you on and uh we will definitely uh, i'm sure we'll definitely be in touch in the future and you know we'll, we'll bring you back and uh, shoot the breeze about something else sometime but uh oh absolutely and uh if you want to see my development as as i continue to move in the direction of doing just check out my show every once in a while and you'll see because that that shows where i'm at that show yeah. that's yeah. me um usually ask people to to you know give up their favorite quote you know, at the end of the show, so I did prepare for that. Hey, look at awesome. that! So, somebody who actually pays attention, actually listens, wow, see that? Yeah, and prepares. <laughs> so I, I, I came it. up with with three brief ones. Uh, but what if Dave? What is, yeah. what is Dave going to do now? You just put him out of the job. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. I'm sure. Our, I'm sure our next guest will have no idea what's coming, so it'll be right, fun. right, right. I listen and I pay attention. That's one of the things I do that that people, some people think is weird. You know, <laughs> the first one is Michael Jackson, the song Man in the Mirror. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Yep. The other two quotes are for, from the same source and they're they're related and they're from uh, Robert A. Heinlein, his character Lazarus Long in the book Time Enough for Love, where they have sections that have quotes from that character. And here are the two quotes. Um, Democracy is based on the assumption that a million men are wiser than one man. How's that again? I missed something. <laughs> this, nice. And the second one is autocracy is based on the assumption that one man is wiser than a million men. Let's play that over again, too. Who decides? 
I like those. those are, uh, nice. I, don't, I don't think I don't think I've read that one. I've read it only. No. I've only read a little bit of Heinlein, but I don't. I don't think I know that one. I'll yep. that that's my. Uh, Ooh, I'm, I'm, just, a, I'm a big fan of Heinlein. And... I'm ready for the Moon is a Horse Mistress. That's the only movie I'm excited. Oh yeah, about. oh yeah. One of my one of my favorites. This one, this one come. This this is neck and neck with this one. Is Moon is a Horse Mistress, but I like a lot of the other ones too. I like Starship Troopers, and I hate what they did with it. <clears throat> oh I yeah. Hate it. Right. I, I will never watch that movie again, and I'm sorry I watched Buenos it. Buenos Aires was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. great great conversation, guys. You've given me a lot more to think about, even more than I've you've given me in your previous shows. And I look forward to talking to you again and uh, continuing to think about this and continue to, to grow and learn. That's that's, that's the main thing I'm that's trying all to we're, do. That's you know, what we're doing learn. as well. We yep. learn. Yep. That's I all st- we're doing. I still learn every day, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good path to be on, though. So uh, glad, glad, glad you're jo- glad you've joined us on this path. It's, uh, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a heck of a ride. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. And Dave, anything you want to finish up with? You know, just the normal taxation is theft. Uh, that's <laughs> my new. Instead of saying goodbye or bye, I just say taxation is theft. That's my new thing. I just that's I that, that's my thing. Oh, that's excellent mm-hmm. thing. Well, I'm glad you have a th- I'm glad you have a thing, Dave. Me, me too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And hopefully we get the guy on from the baseball game, right? Who's, who's I got to message him. Oh, Corey, yeah, 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 one of these mm-hmm. days. But, all right, Danilo, why do, you, why do you take us out of here, Danilo? <laughs> <laughs> well, beautiful day, uh, beautiful conversation, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, so, if anybody wants to help us out, you can um, like, comment, uh, or subscribe to the show to uh, to help us out, to help us share the message of altruism and free markets. Uh, you can also help us on Bitcoin. Uh, for, through Bitcoin or um, Patreon, patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty. And, uh, and yeah, that, that's about it. So, so thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Uh, so this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Station is theft. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com.